Hello to everybody, my name is Alexia Corbucci and he is Luigi Zevola. We are both students at Polytechnic of Turin at the Faculty of Computer Engineering in second year. And we've been developing this video for the Computer Architecture course by Paolo Montuschi. Basically, uh, the assignment that we were given was to implement uh, some uh, arithmetic function on uh, a CPLD. In our case, this was the Runner 2. The, the project was to build from scratch uh, everything needed to uh, input, display and compute, of course, the result of the tangent and the division. These uh, uh, had to be done, of course, using Xilinx software, which is an uh, ICE uh, design suite and uh, uh, required basically to build from scratch what is basically simplified uh, ELU yeah. and uh, uh, some uh, interface in order for the user to input data and get uh, the correct uh, result displayed. The main issue with the, the, the board that we were given was the, um, the limited amount of resources that were available to use. In our case we were using the um, CPLD which only has 256 microcells which to implement division and of course interface, uh, uh, managing inputs and everything is quite tricky despite using I mean, the most conservative algorithm in terms of uh, area used we were still having and facing really big yeah. difficulties in, in fitting it to the, to the project especially because uh, when uh, you have the report of the fitting failure you have the precise parts of the project where you can fit. And actually it is not, e it's not easy to understand how to solve these problems because uh, Xilinx, which is a software, optimizes the design. Uh, so for example, it interconnects the resources. So you may think that uh, by removing something you get an improvement, well it is not like that because maybe that resources was used to optimize other parts of the code. So it's not as easy as it may seem. The, the main issue also with the board is that uh, to implement the input and output you need to um, manage the hardware in such a way that uh, it displays the correct result. So for example when managing input the main issue is that uh, uh, the push buttons on the board uh, being switches basically uh, are affected and in our case really affected by bouncing, which means that the circuit is not able to recognize the correct digital state of the, the button. So we had to implement a, a way of uh, uh, making sure that the input was correctly recognized. At first we tried with the uh, shift register and unfortunately we had to remove it in the second part when we realized that the division was not going to fit in any way on the device uh, and we implemented all the features that we wanted to implement. So we tried moving it outside of the board and this was one of the first components we tried moving outside of the board. In our case we used just uh, um, an inverter and a NAND Schmidt trigger to uh, debounce physically through hardware the, the push buttons which worked but Still, it didn't provide us with enough space on, in terms of microcells and product tunnels, which in the end were the real problem, to, uh, to fit correctly the division and the tangent. The second part uh, that we had to face was the optimization of the algorithm, starting from some very really complex one like uh, Radix. Uh, to and go to code it for, for tangent. In code for tangent, yeah. Because, for example, with Tangent, we wanted to implement the Codic algorithm, which is very famous because it's quite tricky maybe to implement, but it lets you compute quite all the mathematical functions from sine to cosine to tangent to hyperbolic function and so on. The difficulty was in the fitting, and uh, so we had to, I mean, reduce our goal and uh, to use uh, a lookup table. Yeah, and also with the lookup tables, we still had problems because Despite trying to reduce it as much as possible, and by reducing, I mean, we, we only computed integer values and uh, we limited ourselves to two digit precisions. Yeah. Uh, we, we still had problems in 
managing the division which was incredibly big with respect to the uh, the rest of the board i mean managing the hardware and the tangent uh, just took Half 30 percent 40 percent of, uh, of the resources available but despite trying to cut on everything we even moved the the, the clock divider outside of the board to save on, 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 on the counter that we used to implement uh, the, the clock divider didn't in the end uh, work out as we, we wanted to. So we basically uh, moved to a different board which in our case was the Spartan 3 Our savior I'd say the, It's a board made uh, as the, it's the case with the Cool Runner by Digilent and it's much more powerful in terms of uh, also clock but the main, main, main thing is the amount of space that is available on the board which in comparison to the to the Kurana is 10 times yeah, or even, even more. more and that enabled us the flexibility that we needed to conclude the implementation we were lucky in that sense because I mean the, the Kurana 2 and the, mm, the Spartan 3 despite it being very different in terms of architecture, design, uh, hardware were similar enough that we were able to uh, implement the same code that we were using on the Cool Runner, uh, that we were trying to use on the Cool Runner, I should say, on the uh, Spartan 3 without too much effort. And also interfacing was very similar, so we just have to change some pin, port, uh, number, and it worked in the same way. Uh, the, 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 the choices that we made in the end, which were forced to, to our constraint, of the, given by the the Corander 2, we're using the most I mean simple. simple division algorithm, which is also coincidentally the most space saving yeah, algorithm. Exactly. And then now we will show how it is working. The main problem with this board, as we were talking about before, was the limited amount of space that we had to fit all the required resources. So we had to resort to let's say quite extreme measures and move as much as possible outside of the board. The two areas in which we focused were moving the debouncing process outside of the board and this was achieved thanks to this chip here. This IC is a NAND Schmidt trigger which enables debouncing of the transient produced by the push buttons that we use to implement respectively reset decrement and increment. The second attempt we made was moving the clock divider. That is because the clock divider requires quite a lot of memory because of the need to go from a very high, comparatively very high clock frequency of uh, 100 kilohertz to a much smaller 1 hertz frequency which is required for some features on the board. So we tried placing um, the clock divider externally at least for the lowest frequencies in order to save on um, additional memory but this was still not enough in order to fit the division as you can see the board uses this LED to signal that the reset is enabled or not when the reset is enabled one can set the, um, the two registers in the board two uh, preset values such as my ID and Alex ID or to the more common uh, all zeros reset value by pressing the external button on the breadboard here for example now let's say I want to set the ID to Alex ID I just need to press this button here and as you can see it displays this is B this is A Displays on the two register the number. I want to set it to mine, the same operation can be done, and as before, the result is displayed on the two registers. Let's now set everything to zero by pressing the reset button, and let's see how the device works. We have two modes. The first mode is the operation mode, which allows to get the result from the uh, ELU that we uh, implemented internally. The second mode, which is the one that I'm currently in, allows you either to view the different 
registers or to modify them by using the two external push buttons here, this one and this one. By pressing the first one, we can increment the value of the, in this case, we are incrementing the value of register B. When we set it to the other one, we are now viewing register A, we have the same result. So we need to increment it or decrement it, of course, through the other button. At this point, we might want to get a result. So we have to set, for example, if we want tangent, set this switch to tangent mode. And we are trying to get the tangent of this value here. If I move the switch to operation, we get the result. In this case, 0.8D. Of course, as we previously mentioned, we still have a problem with tangent, with the division. So when we set the switch to division, we implemented this feature to signal that the result is, of course, not valid. And now let's see the implementation on the Spartan 3, which is the definitive implementation. Okay, in this board we have 8 LEDs, 4 buttons and 8 switches. We decided to use all of the LEDs, all of the buttons and 4 of the switches. Okay, so you can see that the first two buttons are connected to the reset. The first button sets the reset to custom values, which are mine and Luigi's ID. The second one sets the reset to the default, which is all zero. With the other two buttons, we can increment or decrement. With the four switches, we can set either my, re my reset or Luigi's reset, either to enable or disable the reset, and we can choose between the operations and the operands, and between the set view mode and the opera on the operation result mode. Okay, now we can see how the reset is working, so we enable it by the switch. We can see it is already enabled because the LED is on. Now we can uh, say, for example, okay, do you want my reset? You put this button, and you can see this is the first part of my ID, and this is the second part of my ID. By changing the switch, we get, uh, by pressing the button again, do we this ID, and this is the second part of this ID. Now let's reset everything to default. Okay, we have all zero and disable the reset. Let's try to see how to implement the operation. Now let's try to use the division. We set the first operand, there is a dividend that we say has to be an integer number. Let's choose, for example, the number 10. 10. Now we switch to operand B, which we see as a decimal point because it has to be an integer part of one digit and the decimal part with three digits. That's because we're limited by the fact that the seven segment display is just four digits. So if we have to show three digits for the decimal part, we're just left with one digit for the integer part. Let's try and set top run B. You can see that in this case, the fact that the step is control can be very, very useful. Otherwise, it would take a millennium to set a number. So, for example, this is the result. This is the, the value of 1. So, we have set B. We can just switch this button. This LED will be lighting the division start when the operation is, is uh, being started and will uh, turn off when the operation is done. And so, the result will appear on the display and we will get this. Now we can see that division has a lot of flag controls for overflow and for error. Error occurs when we try to divide by zero. So for example, we can reset everything. We can try to set operand A to something while keeping operand B to zero and trying to perform in the division. So you can see that the dead message appears. Well, you can also think, of what if dead in this case is a number? Well, we are sure it is not a number because the division error flag is now on. We can also check for the overflow. First of all, we have to understand when overflow appears. The fact that we are limited by a three digits position limits us if, um, in, for a, a result which has an integer part smaller or equal to 15, there is f. So every time we left, for example, 
uh, a result which will have an integer part uh, greater or equal to 16, the result will be an overflow. So in this case, we can set operand A to a large number. We can set operand B to a small number. We can try to compute and we will get the overflow led on. Of course, there is also the other operation, which is the tangent. Again, it's convenient to reset everything to zero. Then we switch to operand A. We choose a value for operand A. And we go to result. And this will give the value for the tangent. Also, the tangent has got its error. Also, the tangent has got its error. The error in this case is again an overflow because it's a number which is too big. And we go back to operand A. We set it to this one, for example. We go to result. We've got this bad message and tangent error flag on. We were also able to implement for free the arctangent. In fact, if we stay on the operand uh, display operation result mode and we modify the value, we get that this is the tangent value. And by switching to set operation and to A, we find the angle whose tangent is the one which was displayed before. So this is all for what is uh, concerning the boards. Well, in this video we have shown you which were the technical aspects of this project, starting from the code to the proper algorithms that we have used. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us, and we will be very happy to answer to your questions. Furthermore, if you would like to see our code, the code that we run on the board, you can find that on the course's website, and we will post, of course, the address uh, in the description of the video. And there you can go and see and take everything you need uh, if uh, you, fin you find yourself in a similar situation and need some code to make it work. So thank you for watching and uh, we hope that you like the video and see you. Bye! Bye. -bye.